We are continuing our investigation of soil, rocks, and landforms. This is Investigation 2, Part 2. We will be doing more stream table investigations to see how slope, how steep something is, and flooding affect erosion and deposition. After this slide, you will watch a video about different landform vocabulary words and different pictures of different landforms and I want you to think about what factors might explain how the features that you see in the landforms photo album might have formed what do you think might have caused it to form like it did next we will look at some landform definitions an alluvial fan is a fan-shaped deposit formed when a fast-flowing stream, often a flash flood, flows out onto a dry area. A canyon is a deep valley with steep sides eroded by a river. A delta is a fan-shaped deposit at the mouth of a river. Deposition is the process by which eroded materials settle out in another place. Erosion, the process by which water, wind, or ice carries away earth materials. A floodplain, the land that gets covered by water from a stream or river during a flood. Hill, a small mountain, lower and less steep than a mountain. Meander, a curve or loop in a river. Mountain, a high uplifted area with steep slopes. Valley, a low area between hills and mountains, often where a river flows. Next, we'll look at a landforms photo album. So these particular landforms are formed by weathering and erosion. So an arch, a butte, a mesa, a gorge, a valley, hanging valley, canyon, meander, hoodoo, Exfoliation dome, spheroidal rocks, and then landforms formed by deposition. Alluvial fan, beach. Floodplain, Delta, Sandbar, Levee, Moraine, Outwash Plain, Plain, Sand Dune, Landslide, Slump. So our focus question that you will answer for this particular investigation, the first part of the investigation, there will be two focus questions this lesson. So the first one, and I want you to write it down on paper, how does slope affect erosion and deposition? So slope is how steep something is. So the first question that you will answer is how does slope affect erosion and deposition? 
So we already did the standard setup on Tuesday. So we're going to use the results from that and we're going to compare those results to a slope standard, not a slope stream table. So as you will see in the video, the slope stream table has two wedges underneath it to lift it up. And we'll see what that does to the results. So there's a stream table, a water source, and it's the same standard water source. So same rainwater. Um, we've got the ruler again. We've got two wood angles underneath the slope one, the container, the basin, the meter tape, water. And I will be drawing my results from the observation of the slope stream table. And then I will be showing you the difference between the standard stream table and the slope stream table. So now we're gonna test how slope affects erosion and deposition. So everything's set up the same. We have the tray with the earth material, ruler with a standard water source, so the same like rainwater. But this time we have a slope. We have two wedges underneath to give it more slope. So let's see if that changes the speed of things happening or if there's anything that happens that we notice different. Already we can see it's going pretty much quicker. Wow, that's flying. Didn't have to be quite as patient this time. And the pathway that it takes is a little bit different as well. The slower went off more to the side, and this one's a little bit more middle-ish. We still have our valleys and canyons. And we still have the alluvial fan. And it looks like, look at that, there's some sand that's getting close to the hole. So it definitely changes the force that it moves the earth materials. sand all the way down here. There's two paths. <laughs> Definitely a much quicker process. Really cool. More fan shape than the other one.
All right, so now I'm going to draw what this stream table looks like, and then we'll compare it to the standard stream table. So I've got a slope, a slope tray. So starting from the top, look at the sand has gotten all the way down to, looks like 48, and the clay is all the way to the end. So slope, slope, slope. I'm gonna turn it so it looks like it. And it's more of like it comes more down the middle. And it comes out farther. And it kind of comes this way. And down and in. Guess I didn't need to do yeah, I did need to do that. And it gets more narrow. And it comes down, what I say, about 48. So this is the sand. And then we've got our clay that's kind of down in this area. Remember, I'm not going to shade that in. I'm just going to leave it. All right, so if we compare it to the standard... You can see that the slope does have a big effect because here was the sand with the standard. It came about to 28. The sand came all the way down to 48 with the slope. So where did erosion occur? Did the slope make a difference in how much earth material it eroded? Well, erosion occurred in the canyon and more materials eroded in the steeper tray. Did you notice any difference in the time it took for erosion or deposition? Things usually happen faster in the slope tray. How far did the eroded materials travel in the two trays? Uh, in the standard tray, it was about 28 centimeters, and in the slope tray, about 48 centimeters. Did the slope make a difference? in the shape of the canyon that was left after the earth materials were carried away. The canyon is usually deeper and has steeper sides with the slope. How far did the eroded materials travel in the two trays? I answered that one, but the earth material traveled farther in the slope tray. And why do you think there was more erosion in the steeper tray? So if you were thinking when the land was steeper, water flowed faster, faster flowing water has more energy to move sand and clay farther along the stream. So faster water causes more energy, which causes the sand and clay to move farther along in the stream. So how does this help you explain what happened in the photos in the Landforms photo album? So just think about that one. You don't have to write the answer to that down. Just think about how did those different features form? So assignment number one for today's lesson is to answer the focus question, how does slope affect erosion and deposition? 
please use the new vocabulary words in your answer and please take a picture of it and submit it on Seesaw or email. And we do have a second part. So the next part we're gonna test is flood. So what is a flood? Floods are caused by excessive runoff from rain or snow melt. If soil is frozen or soaked with water, water can't soak in. So runoff is greater. So if it can't soak in, it has to go somewhere so it just runs off and floods. Because there is so much water in a flood, land that is normally dry gets covered with water. So here's your second assignment for today. Answer the second focus question. How do floods affect erosion and deposition? So please write that question down on a piece of notebook paper. How do floods affect erosion and deposition? So we're gonna use the standard results from Tuesday to compare to the flood stream table. So again, we have another stream table with earth materials. This time we have a flood water source, the ruler, and then we're putting a pencil underneath, a one liter container of water, a basin, a meter tape. And so now I want you to watch the flood demonstration. So the next part of the investigation helps us answer the question, how do floods affect erosion and de deposition? So we have this table, the tray. It's like the standard, there's a pencil underneath, so not much slope. The difference is we now have a flood water source. So the hole in the bottom is bigger. So what might happen if it floods? Will it happen quicker? Will there be more you know, destruction going on? So we will find out. Ooh, it's more spread out. Pretty quick. Pretty powerful. On the table. <laughs> well, the sand doesn't come out quite as far, but it was a lot wider, it looks like. So it was powerful at first, and it pushed the sand, but all that clay, you can see a whole bunch of clay coming down. It was quick.
Come on, I'm going to stop. And you can see with flooding, the water just kind of stays, just like in a flood. It doesn't go away right away. You know, when we have a flood, it takes a while for it to recede back to where it was before. All right, so let's go ahead and draw what we see because all the water is out of the container. We still have the water, I know, but that's just what a flood does. Looks like it's to 26. So it didn't even go as far as the standard, but it's a lot fatter path, it looks like. sure there's some clay down in here. I can see some little spots of it randomly. So remember the shaded part is the sand, the white part is the clay, and we have some random spots of white. So our flood is starting to slowly recede. So before we go over the landform vocabulary, I want to talk a little bit about the results of that particular flood stream table. So you could see that flood conditions resulted in like more sand eroding. It was a bigger like mass of it that moved. It was broader. It was deeper. There were straighter canyons. There was more extensive deposition that reached farther into the basin. The flood eroded more earth material than the standard and slope. So more material. Maybe it didn't go as far, but it was wider. The flood eroded more earth material than the standard and sloped because a larger mass of moving water has more energy than a smaller mass of moving water. So it was more spread out if you looked at the drawing. So let's go ahead and talk about the landform vocabulary. So again, you can see where the valley is located. Again, you can see where the canyon is located. The delta that makes like the fan. Now we have something called a meander, so where the river bends back and forth. We've added mountain, and we've added floodplain. So now we're going to review some new vocabulary. The slope is ground that forms a natural or artificial incline or slant. Flood, a large amount of water flowing over land that is usually dry. Floodplain, the land that gets covered by water from a stream or river during a flood. Mountain, a high uplifted area with steep slopes. Meander, a curve or loop in a river or stream river channel, a river that flows deeper in the center and moves along in a confined pathway. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I want you to answer the focus question. 
The second focus question for today, how do floods affect erosion and deposition? So what did you notice from the results? What did it do to the earth material? Maybe it didn't go as far, but it had a whole lot more earth material that was moved when it moved. So before we answer the following questions, I wanted to give you a little bit more information about flooding. So normal weathering and erosion change Earth's surface a tiny bit at a time. So it can take thousands of years to create a valley or alluvial fan. A flood, however, is an event that can change Earth's surface in a short period of time. Floods can destroy existing landforms and create new landforms in hours and days. A flood can erode and redeposit more rock material in 10 hours than normal water flow can erode and redeposit in 10 years. So let's go ahead and answer these following questions. So how do erosion and deposition contribute to soil formation? Well, earth materials are caught, carried from one location to another, and especially during floods, deposit many more new layers of rock material. And how might a flood harm soils? Erosion can take away the fertile topsoil that is good for growing crops. And how might erosion and deposition contribute to the kinds and sizes of rock material that you find in soils? The kinds of rock you find in a soil depends on the kind of parent rock or the source rock. What did that rock break off of? And how the rock has weathered and moved. As rocks erode, they tumble against one another. For instance, in a river or flood, more pieces break off and they get smaller and smaller. When rock particles are deposited, they can become part of the soil. So on Tuesday, I showed you the four soil vials that we had from investigation one. And we learned some more information on Tuesday and we've learned some more information today. So I want you to use your knowledge about erosion and deposition to think about the four different soil samples from, from investigation one. Now maybe you changed them already, but you still have a chance to change them. And if you didn't get them all right, that's okay. I'm going to give you where they're located and the evidence that's where they're from. All right, soils from investigation one. So they have some drawings, but I have the actual soils that we used. So did you think soil number one came from the forest, desert, mountaintop, or river delta? Particles are pretty small. A little bit of humus floating on the top. If you thought soil number one came from river delta, you're correct. The evidence is the smallest earth material. It's been carried a long way when deposited into the delta. The water is rushing over it and breaking it down, breaking it down. So it's the smallest particles. Soil number two. Now this one had the biggest particles in it. So do you think soil number two was from forest, desert, or mountaintop? Biggest particles. If you thought soil number two came from mountaintop, you're correct. The evidence is large pieces of earth material. It hasn't traveled far enough to break down more, and there's not a lot of humus. Soil number three. So the two choices for three and four will be desert and forest. So which do you think number three is? There's a lot of sand. If you thought desert, you're correct. The evidence is mostly sand and gravel and not a lot of humus. And last but not least, soil number four. is the forest. The evidence is lots of humus and different sizes of earth materials. 
Good job, everyone.